in the extended acl lab session practically uh, let's see what is extended access list how to configure it and how it works if you are new to acl i have given other link uh, where we talked about uh, what is acl what are the types of acl in detail so please watch that video first and then you see this video because uh, there are two types of acl and it is an advanced method okay so if you uh, get a chance to see that video first and if you see it it will give you a clear understanding about acl okay and if you are new to our channel please subscribe the channel for regular updates let's see so uh, extended acl uh, extended access list is an advanced access control list it's an advanced security feature in our layer 3 network and uh, it is a set of uh, rules that either permit or deny a traffic that passes through the router okay and as i said it's a set of rules all these rules will be processed one by one when a traffic comes into the router or uh, the interface where the acl is applied this traffic will be uh, applied uh, this traffic will be processed along with uh, all the rules that's available in the acl in the sequence order one by one and if one rule is matched the other rules uh, the following rules are not processed anymore and if one rule is matched uh, the decision will be uh, taken accordingly the rule which is which it is matched if it is permit if it is if the rule says to permit then the traffic will be permitted by the router and if the rule uh, says to deny it will be denied so this is what uh, the access list works and this extended access list uh, we can write this extended access list based on source ip address destination ip address port number protocol and service services and so on okay it's a kind of advanced uh, access control list advanced access is here okay uh, whereas uh, co comparing to the standard access uh, control list there we can able to write only based on the source ip uh, but here we can do it in more detail Okay, in more combinations as like with the source IP, destination IP, port number, protocol, and services. And uh, so this is the small uh, example. Of, uh, this is the small example we are going to see in our lab. Okay, I have two routers here, and uh, the WAN connection for the WAN connections I have used the IP address one seventy two sixteen ten dot zero slash thirty, and the LAN for this router I have used one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot zero slash twenty four. And for this network, I have used 10.10.10.0/24. And uh, in, in this network, I am using one web server, uh, web server where we can uh, access uh, from a web uh, browser. Using a browser from this PC, we can access this web server. Okay. So I have a web server in this network with the IP address 10.10.10.2. In order to minimize your time, uh, I have already configured the IP addresses at the WAN interface and the LAN interface, and also for the end devices. Okay, and also I have uh, configured a static route uh, for this network in this router, and also I have configured a static route for this router in this network. I can show you for one router because I don't want to waste your time. Show IP route. So if you see that. The network 10 10 10 slash 24. This network is learned via static, and the next hop is 172 10.2. Just like the same from this router, I wrote a static route saying that to reach this network, the next hop is 172 10.1. Okay, and also uh, I'll show you how to configure this web server. I have also shown in the last video uh, in our standard EC video, also has shown how to configure it, but still, I'll show you one. Very simple as like how we assign IP address to the uh, PC. You just need to go here, you need to configure the IP address along with the subnet and gateway. So, once the IP configuration is done, go to services and first go to DNS. So, in the DNS, you need to add a record here. So, I use the IP address instead of domain name. So, I added uh, with the device IP itself. So, I have given the IP here and here, and I have created the record. Okay, because uh, when I'm trying to access this web server from the remote PC, I'm I'm not going to give any domain name. I'm just going to use the IP address. Okay. Also, then once this DNS record is created, and one more important thing, by default, this DNS service will be in off. You need to make sure it is enabled. And then come to HTTP. By default, it will be in off, and you can 
on enable it okay i don't want to use https so that i just enable http and this is the default configuration provided by cisco okay and if you uh, if you want to have your own html page yes you, are, you can do it either you can edit it here or you can uh, do on your own okay. you can create a new file you can click here and create a new file and you can create your own html page okay so this is how you can create a web page okay so this is our uh, lab setup for the extended ESL and uh, one more thing for the extended ESL we need to update the ESL uh, that's close to the source okay that's very important and as we know already uh, when creating ACL there are two steps one is first to create the ACL that's a list of rules and the second point uh, we need to apply that ACL in the router interface and need to mention whether it is an inbound or outbound when I say inbound, say for example, for this router, if I'm applying the AC like this interface, uh, inbound means when a traffic comes this way, okay? From this way, when when a, when a traffic comes into the router, it is an inbound. At the same time, when a traffic comes in this way, it's going out of this interface, right? So that when a traffic comes this way, it is out, and when a traffic comes through this interface, it is inbound for this particular interface, okay? Just like the same if I am applying here, it is out and it is in. So this is what inbound and outbound means. We, we need to make sure where we are applying our ACL and it should be correct. Uh, if, if we apply in the other direction, then it may not give you the expected output. Okay. So this is our lab setup. And uh, as I said earlier, I have a web server here and my requirement here is I want to, uh, I'm going to create an extended ACL, which uh, which will not allow to ping but at the same time you can access the web server say for example from this network uh, or this PC or this PC I'm trying to access this server uh, using the web browser it should work and at the same time from the command prompt if I try to ping this server or this PC it will be denied you're not allowed to ping it okay so this is the first requirement let's see how it works and before that I'll show you uh, that this network is working so now i let me try to ping uh, from this pc to the web server and this pc and i'll show you that it's working ping dot, ping dot, ping dot, ping dot one. so i can able to reach this pc from this one and also let me try to ping the web server if you see now the web server is uh, pinging okay it's reachable icmp but once we apply the acl it, it is not allowed okay and at the same time from the web browser I'm just giving the ip address 10 10 10 dot 2 nothing but the ip address of this web server because i created the dns record for this ip only so, see I, this is the default uh, web page that is created in the web server so uh, which, which shows that now the communication from this network and this network is working good and uh, I can able to reach ping both the devices and uh, web server is also working good with port 80 okay so this is the proof that says it's working good and now what we are going to do we are going to disable or we, we are going to allow only uh, the web service and not the other service when i say not the other service if you try to ping it will never work because specifically explicitly we are going to mention that only web traffic is allowed okay so this is the most uh, advanced uh, this is the reason it is called as an advanced acl or the one of the most important advantage i can say because in the standard acl if once the once a traffic is allowed based on any source ip address source ip address then it is common in that permission or the permitted traffic uh, it, it's to for all the services he, he can allow he can access all the services available in the other network however in the extended ACL we can explicitly mention the service to what service uh, he can access permitted and others what services are denied so that privilege we have in the extended ACL so first thing we are going to create a extended ACL config terminal IP access list extended and the number range for the extended ACL is 100 to 199 so if you give any number between 100 to 199 then the router understands that 
it is for extended ACL. And if we are using, instead of making here an extended, and if you put standard and put any number from 1 to 99, then try to think it is a standard ACL. Okay. Now here we are working on extended. So I'll put 101 as the extended ACL number. Okay, once it is created, I need to write the rule. So what I'm going to, uh, uh, for the first rule should be, uh, my first rule is I'm going to allow the web access to this server from all the devices or the entire network of this LAN. Okay, so permit. You can also put question marks. Uh, you can write this in any sequences, like you can give the source, destination, and port number later, or you can mention it earlier. So whatever sequence you need, you can mention it. You see, it will give uh, more options if uh, comparing to the source uh, or the standard ACL, where it give you one option that's asked you for the source type, source IP. But here it will give you more options, as like uh, the routing protocol, the port number, IP, or protocol TCP or UDP or something. Okay, so uh, I'm going for TCP because that's the first it. I'm allowing only HTTP traffic. The source address here is mentioned, right? So I'm giving the entire um, LAN IP of this network 192.168.0.10.0, and the wildcard mask for this network is 0 .0 0.0.0.255 because it's a stash 24 network, right? Wildcard mask is nothing but the inverse of subnet mask. This was subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So the inverse of that is in wildcard mask. So I put 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. Okay. And so the destination IP address. And uh, you can mention here, uh, either you can mention the IP address here as like 10, 10, 10, 2, and uh, specifically mention this uh, wildcard mask. Or instead, if you want to uh, specific if the rule is specific to one device, you can use the uh, word host as mentioned here, right? A single destination. You can also, uh, while you're specifying the source or source also, you can mention as a host. So host is the keyword uh, that uh, tells that it is for the specific or the single uh, device. Okay. So the destination host is 10.10.10.2. And here I need to mention what is the port. Again, you put question mark. I'm going to use EQ, which means equal to. Okay, equal to which port I need to mention. Okay, match only packets on the given port. If I mention EQ, which means to equal to, and I'm telling that port number is 80, nothing but your HTTP. And hello. If you see the rule, what I'm writing, it's permitting the TCP traffic from this network 192.168.10.0 slash 24 network reaching the destination 10.10.10.2 with the port number 80 for HTTP service. Okay. So this is what I have created. Let me. So once it's created, I need to apply it in the interface. Interface zero bit Ethernet zero slash one. Here I'm applying that ACL that's created. IP access group one zero one, and as it's an outbound, I'm telling it out. We have created it. Let's see. Show IP yep, we have created it. And as I said earlier, uh, usually uh, extended ACL, it's always suggested to create near the source, and the standard ACL is suggested to create uh, near the destination. We have created it here by mistake, but still, uh, as it's a lab, that's fine because we have 1D2 router, that's fine, it will work. Let's see. See, earlier when we try to reach the web server, uh, when we try to ping the rest server, web server, it worked right. Now, it will never work. 
because here in this interface we explicitly wrote a uh, rule saying that only to permit the http 80 traffic to this particular device okay so as it is an icmp packet it is getting denied here and also if i try to reach the pc this one it will not reach. it will be denied because we have one uh, only one rule to allow the traffic to reach this server as you know that uh, explicitly uh, implicit deny is the uh, last command of all the acl which denies all other traffic if there is no traffic that matches to the rules then the packet will be getting dropped because of the default deny deny all is the rule which is available in all acls okay so uh, though we are getting denied though we are unable to reach it by icmp or we are unable to ping him ping the destination we can access the web server using the browser okay see though we are unable to ping we earlier we tried to ping it but it never worked but now we trying to reach that with the web browser it is reachable it is accessible why because here in this interface we allowed we, we wrote an uh, rule saying that whenever there is a traffic comes from this network to reach the destination for port 80 which is http traffic allow it so as it is an http traffic with port 80 it is allowed and we are able to access this destination and at the same time when we are trying to ping it is not allowed okay I can show you here show ip access list 101 if you see here see there are five matches five hits to this particular um, row okay. so this is how extended acl works and also i can do one more thing we can uh, uh, write an another rule to permit the icmp for this particular i'm getting into the same uh, acl policy same acl okay. and i'm creating a new rule permit icmp and the source is 10.0 with a wildcard mask 0.0.0.255 because it's a slash 24 network and to which host I'm allowing I'm allowing ICMP to only this destination okay 10. Dot, 10. Dot, 10. Dot, We have created that policy as the same ACL is already updated in this interface. Let's check from this PC now. Now, let me try to reach 10, 10, 1. See, now we are able to do ICMP ping. Earlier, when we tried, it doesn't work because there was no rule available. Once we put a rule to reach uh, this particular PC using ICMP, it's working. At the same time, if I try to reach the web server, what happens? because I have no rule to allow the ICMP for this web server. Okay. So this is how the extended ACL works. So hope this video is useful. If you feel it's useful, please like the channel, like the video, subscribe the channel for regular updates and please share with your friends. If you have any queries, please ask in the comment box. Thank you for watching.